It's day 11 of my expedition through remote northern Namibia. I'm here with my good friend and overland guru, Paul Marsh. We are heading towards the fabled Van Sales Pass, a tortuous track infamous for braking vehicles and nerves. But it's a long drive. Today in particular has been mile after mile of winding gravel roads. And to top it all off, we have a flat tyre. So what do you say? Well, that's the, that's the reality of driving on these roads. It's a sharp stone that's gone in. And Can you see the damage? Tire. Yeah, it's at the back here. It's a very sharp stone that's actually gone in. I can feel it's distorted the tyre. Well, you won't believe what's gone in the tyre, but let me show you. It's no rock. Our rocks do do that damage, but actually it's uh, something metal we're going to try and pull out. All right, hopefully these can mm -hmm. get it out. Explain yourself, Mr. Marsh. Uh -huh. Everything's about safety, and this is obviously a dangerous, or can be a very dangerous operation with a heavy loaded vehicle. We're on a slight rise, and it could be a lot steeper if you were stuck. And I put the, the rocks there, so to test that my chocks are actually going to hold the wheel and stop it from rolling back. I've taken the handbrake down, it out of gear, released the foot brake to just make sure that it rolls onto the shock chocks and goes no further. Then I can put everything back in place. Before you take that wheel off. Absolutely. Is the critical yeah, thing. yeah. Before I take the wheel off. It's a great spot to jack on. The ground's very, very hard. I haven't actually even put the base underneath because it's not needing to spread the load. And we've got the jack underneath there, and I'll be able to safely jack it up and then make our repair. This is the first puncture I have suffered with a BF Goodrich tyre since 2009. So now I have to start the clock from here again. So next time I talk about the last time I had a puncture, I have to count it from 1st of July 2016. But of course the fact that we were going slowly, we were probably doing about 40 kilometers an hour, maybe even less because we were going through these dips. When it hit, we slowed down so quickly and stopped before we <laughs> did any damage to the tower at all, so there's a good chance we can just plug it. That is, of course, if we can get the piece of steel out. Well, you're making headway. Slowly. <laughs> it is just being that devil. Well, that was unlucky. That was very unlucky. Shit, look at that thing. That was... That is... It's made a nice hole. Okay, okay. that's a result of bad luck. More than anything else. Crikey. <laughs> <laughs> The next job is the moderately easy task of inserting a plug, a oh temporary God. repair that'll get us to our campsite. The sun is going down, so it's time to find a place to camp. If you go through there, through the scout, straddle this guy, straddle this one. I'm going to walk ahead of you. It's a bit of a squeeze. I wonder if these are puncture type thorns. Um, I can see a I can see a spot right there. Perfect little spot. Away from the road. If you reverse in here, if you go up there and reverse in here, and you can park right here. Okay? Nice little spot, I suggest shoes. <laughs> This narrow winding track, six hours, quite grueling, towards Van Sales Pass. 
and we're heading now to the equivalent of Everest Base Camp. This is the base camp that serves Van Sales Pass. And Van Sales Pass is without doubt the most famous pass in all of Namibia, if not all of Southern Africa. And we'll be going down it tomorrow morning. Van Sales Pass is the only link from the vast plateau of central northern Namibia to the coastal gravel plains. The pass is less than 20 kilometers long, but it takes six to eight hours to drive. So it's essential that we get a good night's rest before tomorrow's challenge. Well, here we are, the campsite at Van Sales. And look, there are people over there. Oh, nice, eh? A lovely campsite this is. Uh, no tap or anything, but we've got our own water supply so we can have a, a good old wash. But as tough as Fun Sales is, the one on the river, it does draw a crowd, if you can call it a crowd. How are you doing? How's it? Fun Sales campsite, community based campsite. All of the funds go to supporting local communities. They supply firewood, but they do charge for it. Beautiful location right on the riverbed. Couldn't wish for more. We've got water, which is great. No showers or ablution blocks, but we can at least use the water and have a good old clean because um, after a very hot day, particularly changing the wheel, and sorting out the flat tire today, definitely in need of a, of a bit of a wash. You're gonna swing it around a bit and? Yeah. Okay. The only thing it is though that it it does feel strange having people around. I mean, I can hear them knocking and talking and all of the other camps have been utterly silent. And I think because of that, their noise has been amplified because we're not used to it. We're used to silence. And what a lovely surprise that is. Donkey boiler for hot water and a place to have a shower. That is such a pleasant surprise. And not only a place to have a shower, but if I'm not mistaken, a, uh, a uh, well, you know. And what a nice surprise to see is Paul is putting my tent up for me. Oh yes, fair trade I say, fair trade. He says I'm cooking supper. <coughs> he doesn't know <coughs> what I'm cooking yet. For the next few days, Paul and I will be traversing one of the most remote parts of all of Southern Africa. It's unlikely that we will encounter anyone who could offer assistance should anything go wrong. So it's the perfect time to check our vehicle and equipment. <laughs> but this morning, we are going to empty these two cans we've been carrying for the last uh, few days. Actually, since yesterday. Eh? Yeah, at Puros. We uh, filled up two extra cans, just to give us extra range. We haven't got an extra tank on this car. It's the standard 130 litre. I'm using a simple super siphon. It's got a little one-way valve. It means I don't have to suck any diesel through a pipe. However, there is a little um, provisor. When you get the guys to fill this up, or if you fill it up yourself, if you're going to use a super siphon, you stop about here. If you really, if you put it to the top, it, it, this then splashes as you get it going, so just, just be aware of that. And there it goes. So it's easy. It doesn't take us more than a few minutes. No one's stressing. I'm not having to make sure it goes down far enough, otherwise you get air bubbles and it'll just keep sucking until it's finished. Uh, we've been just thinking, where does this water come from? Is it drinkable out of the tap? And you can never tell. In a place like this, far away from settlements, well, how far away? That's the big question. If it's very close to a settlement, there's a fair chance the water might be contaminated. If it's very far from settlements, then less chance. If you ask the locals, they might say, oh, it's fine to drink. We drink it all the time. But remember that they, their stomachs would have acclimatized to water very different from what we are used to living in, in developed countries and in towns and cities. So 
Be careful with water from whatever source, no matter what the locals say. And we carry lots of this. It's, it would be much nicer to drink the local water. But always ask the people that would understand that predicament if the water is drinkable before you drink it. People of Korkaland are the Himba. They're, uh, they're very primitive people. They uh, mostly do not wear Western clothes. Um, and unfortunately, they, they're used to tourists giving them sweets. So that the, the, the children will come and ask for, they'll, they'll shout sweets, sweets, they'll shout chocolate, chocolate, which is a little unfortunate because. Um, I think that, I personally, I think that um, tourists give them sweets because they're ignorant. Um, they don't have tooth br uh, brushing facilities, they, so their teeth rot because of the sugar. They don't eat sugar. Sugar is not part of their natural diet, so it's, it's, not, it's not good for them. Um, fruit, yeah. I often travel with fruit and give fruit to people, which is, I think, what we're going to do now. Okay, this is very good for you, but you must share. It is possible, even quite likely, that these children have never seen a banana before. Without, without doubt, man, absolutely beautiful pass, just exquisite, unique in Southern Africa. suggested to Paul that he drive the really rough bits, mainly because the vehicle is his responsibility, and if it were mine, I would be more comfortable if the owner was in control. Choices, 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 Okay, come dead straight. Straight as you are. Dead straight. Absolutely straight. Turn hard. Yeah, ha ha. When sales pass is notorious for robbing people of their kit because they breaks and if it's big enough they have to leave it behind and there is one such example 
right there, somebody's trailer that didn't make it. Well, little did I know that halfway along Van Zels, there is now a campsite. And uh, there's a sign there saying Contour Campsite. Contour means office campsite. And that wooden structure down there is the office. <laughs> anyway, no, no, there are no facilities. It's a place you can camp. Don't see a place for fire. Don't know if it's a used campsite, but this would be an amazing, amazing place to camp. And that is the trail along which we've come. One of the drawbacks of such a beautiful place is, of course, everybody knows about it. Uh, the maps are good. Modern vehicles are good. So you can get here reliably. And we've counted so far four vehicles that have passed us and we've been here for about three hours. So uh, it's really difficult, becoming more and more difficult to get away completely away from people. And as wonderful as this place is, I may, maybe I'm uh, socially inept, but I much prefer being on my own. But to enjoy a place like this, one has to accept that other people want to enjoy it too. Those of you who are well-traveled will know the Sydney Opera House, London Bridge, the rocks of Sydney, Copacabana Beach, the Sugarloaf Mountain. Where else? Every place has its signature tourist spot that everybody recognizes when they see the picture. <laughs> they know exactly where it is without being told. This is that place in the Korkafeld. However, the most challenging part of Van Sales is its okay. second half. Uh, the toughest bit so far. Yeah, w which line do you want me to... Um, well, I think the biggest difficulty is falling into that hole there. So it comes down slowly down here. Yeah. Okay, so it comes back here. Coming down here, as All you right. can see. Two, you know, cross actual here, and then the car tends to want to tip because you're too high there, too low here. Yeah. If you come, if you can come down here. So you're going to come around there. Down there. Earth to the there. left, that, to so your right. Come here. And try and straighten up here as much as possible, because okay. if you can straighten up here. Okay, fine. No, oh, because this is very high on this side. Very high. Very high then you, and you drop in, that's the risk you have. Named after a Dutch explorer who apparently drove the route with Himba tribesmen and a Model T Ford in 1920. At least that's what I can find out about it. Right now to help him direct him down here. What I do know is that it drops close to 2,000 feet and is listed on the dangerousroads.org website as a, well, one of the world's most spectacular and dangerous roads. This is not something that can be hurried. And if I'm to direct Paul Slightly. effectively, Slightly. I think that I'm going to have to forego filming it as well. Yeah. Uh, it's too difficult for me to get up here. I can't. I'm, I've got to. I'm not going to film it. It's too difficult and too dangerous. Good. Nice one. Nearly seven hours from the pass's top, we receive our reward for our efforts, the endless plains of the Morian Fluss. There are few landmarks in these open, open plains, but this is one of them, and it's been documented on several maps by several different publishers uh, as the burnt out Land Rover and here it is here looks like a series what would you say a series three Land Rover and it's been here for decades Good bulkhead if you straighten it up <laughs> and the amazing thing is that 
really keen Land Rover enthusiast, get it running again. This Land Rover succumbed because of fire. Now you can see the grass is actually very, very high. Now because quite a few travelers cross the Marianne Fluss, the grass in the middle of the track is actually quite low and it's not really a danger to us at all. You can see there it is far lower than the grass around it. But now if that grass was tall and was hitting our radiator, firstly the grass seeds would get into the radiator and cause overheating and worse the grass would act could actually catch it around the exhaust pipe and the, the car catch a light and that is exactly what happened with this particular vehicle it was it's it, it was burnt it was burnt uh, by grass catching fire around the exhaust pipe Well, what an amazing experience to sit out here and wait for the sun to set. We're about 30 minutes from the Konini River now, which is northerly. So there's no camping permitted in the Marion Fluss Conservancy, and I can understand why. Imagine people just going off and making tracks to the trees. It would just spoil it. So we're going to camp there and come back at first light and have this experience all over again. Kind of hanging on as long as as long as possible just enjoying the absolute absolute solitude of of the place and the stars are stars that we've just had a we made ourselves a quick bite to eat because we just, if we arrive at late after dark at the camp it doesn't really matter we just didn't want to miss a second of this the stars are starting to pop in the sky i just didn't want to miss a second okay <laughs> what we've decided to do change of plan headed a little bit north and then a little bit west out of the Morian Fluss and into the Hartman Valley, just on the edge of it. Because in the Hartman Valley, you're allowed to wild camp. But we're, we've decided absolutely no impact camping. In fact, we're not even gonna pitch our tents. We've got a bedroll right behind the vehicle on the track. And we're gonna sleep under this magnificent Milky Way galaxy. 